tonight I'll be reading Dory's Magic by Patricia Coombs. She also illustrated all of these books. This is Dory. She is a witch, a little witch. Her hat is always on crooked. Sometimes her shoes are on the wrong feet. Sometimes she has one pink sock and one blue striped sock. Sometimes she cannot find any socks at all. On Saturday, the big witch, Dory's mother said, I'm going to town to do my shopping, and I want you to stay home with Cook, Dory, and please be a good girl. We are having a party tonight. Oh, how nice, said Dory. But, Mother, I don't want to stay home. I want I don't want to be good. I want to come to town with you. No, Dory, said the big witch. You have to stay home. Now go upstairs and make your bed. Put away your things and be good. And the big witch got on her very best broomstick and rode away over the treetops. Dory went into the kitchen. Cook was stirring something in a big pot on the stove. It bubbled and bubbled. Gink the cat was looking at the pot. Dory looked at the pot. I want some, said Dory. It smells good. Cook stirred the pot with a big spoon harder and harder. You can't have any, said Cook. This is for the party tonight. I'm very busy. Go away and play. I'll make my bed, said Dory, and I'll put away my things. Cook stopped stirring the pot. Cook looked at Dory. Gink turned around and looked at Dory, too. Do you feel all right, asked Cook. Are you sick? Cook frowned. Cook always frowned when she was busy. No, said Dory, I'm not sick. I'm being good. I always feel very bad when I'm being good. And Dory went upstairs. Gink with, went with her. Dory looked into her room. There were socks on the floor and socks on the dresser and socks under the bed. There was her nightgown on the lamp. Her coat was hung over the chair. Her books and papers and pencils were all over the floor. It was a mess. Dory thought and thought and thought. Gink, said Dory, I know a way to clean up my room and make my bed that will be fun. Come with me and I'll show you some real magic. Dory went down the hall. She took a big key from her pocket and opened the door. There was a long flight of stairs. It was dark. Dory climbed the stairs. Up and up and up she went. And Gink went with her. At the top of the stairs was a little door. Dory took a key and opened the little door. The door opened into a secret room that nobody was supposed to go into except the big witch. It was the room where the big witch mixed her magic. It was the room where the big witch made strange things happen. There were bats and spiders and toads all over the floor. There were all kinds of jars and bottles on the table, too. This room is a mess, too, said Dory. She shut the little door and went over to the table. She took a big bowl and poured some red stuff into it. Then she poured some blue stuff into it. It began to bubble. Dory took a book down from the shelf. She opened it and looked for the recipe that cleaned up rooms. Then she frowned. After a long time, she went back to the bowl and added a handful of white grains that looked like salt. The bowl bubbled louder and louder and began to smell very strange. Dory opened the window. Gink jumped up on the windowsill. He did not like that smell at all.
Abracadabra, skitty canoe, said Dory. She said it three times. There now, said Dory. That is all there is to it. Come on, Gink. We will go down and see how nice my room looks. The bed will be made and my all my things put away. And I do hope the magic found my other pink sock. Down, 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 down the stairs went Dory and Gink went with her. Dory looked at her room. Oh, said Dory. Something went wrong in that recipe. Dory's room was upside down. I must have stirred the wrong way, said Dory, or maybe I put in too much of that white stuff. Oh dear, I will have to start over all over start all over again. And Dory climbed up and up and up the stairs and Gink went with her. She poured more and more and more stuff into the bowl. It began to bubble and to turn pink and purple and blue. Gink put his nose between his paws so that he could not smell it. The bats began to squeak and fly around through the bubbles and the toads hid under the table. Just then Dory heard a shout from downstairs. She opened the door a little and stuck her head out. It was Cook. Stop it, shouted Cook. Stop it right now. Cook looked very, very angry about something. Stop what? What's the matter? asked Dory. Cook stamped her foot and waved a spoon in the air. Three white ducks are the matter. There are three white ducks swimming around in my soup kettle. Cook, said Dory, you have been working too hard. You go back to the kitchen and look at that soup kettle again. The ducks will be gone. With that, Dory shut the door and hurried back to the bowl. She shook some blue stuff into it and then poured some red stuff into it. She found another recipe and said, Quack, quack, skitter, scat, three times. Dory sat down. I hope that will take care of the ducks, she said, but I still will have to turn my room right side up. This time, Dory poured a little bit of everything into the bowl. It smoked and bubbled and changed color every minute. Dory stood back and admired it. My, she said, Mother will be so glad I learned how to make magic. She looked in the book again and found a very long magic spell that began with abracadabra and ended with zoomy zimmy zoop zdidi. Dory said it three times and stirred very slowly. At last I've finished, said Dory. Come on, Gink, we'll go see if my room looks how my room looks now now that it's all straightened up. Down, 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 down the stairs went Dory and Gink went with her. Dory opened the door to her new, to her room. She looked and looked. It was still a mess. It was still upside down. And now the three white ducks were in her dresser drawer. Well, Gink, I'll try again after lunch. Come on, I'm hungry. Dory went to the kitchen. Where's lunch, cook? Where are you? called Dory, but no one answered. Dory looked into the soup kettle. The kettle was empty. The stove was cold. Just then the kitchen window flew open. A horse looked at Dory. Dory looked at the horse. She looked at the horse again. The horse was frowning. The horse was wearing Cook's big black hat. Oh, said Dory. Oh my. Oh, I'm sorry, cook. I must have made a mistake. You wait right out there in the yard, and as soon as I have lunch, I will go back upstairs and turn you into cook again. I am sure there is just the right recipe, if I can only find it. The horse snorted. Well, said Dory, feeling rather cross about the horse, I didn't know the magic was going to come down here. It was supposed to stay upstairs and fix my room. The horse snorted again louder. Dory did not like the way that horse looked at her. She turned around and went to the cupboard to look for something for lunch. She got down a jar of strawberry jam and a loaf of bread. Then she took the milk pitcher and poured a cup of milk for herself and a bowl for Gink.
she put the bowl of milk down on the floor for Gink. Gink sniffed it and began to sneeze. He sneezed and sneezed and sneezed. Dory, looks, Dory sat down at the table. She took a drink of milk. It tasted like ketchup. Ugh, said Dory. Dory spread the strawberry jam on a piece of bread and took a bite. The jam tasted like mustard. The bread tasted like pepper. Dory got up from the table. Funny, she said. I am not a bit hungry after all. Dory looked at the clock above the stove. It was getting late. Soon the big witch would be home. Everyone would be coming for the party. Dory did not feel very happy. Out of the kitchen, she ran up and up and up the stairs and back to the little room. Gink ran after her. Look out, Gink, said Dory. I'm going to have to start all over again. She took the bowl and dumped it, out, emptied it out the window. As the magic bubbles blew away, everything turned pink. The sky was pink. The trees were pink. Dory looked down at her socks. One was light pink. The other was medium pink with dark pink stripes. Gink, said Dory, maybe this pink magic turned my room right side up. I don't care if it's pink as long as it's right side up. Come on, let's go and see. And down, 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 down the stairs. Dory and Gink went with her. Ran Dory and Gink went with her. She opened up the door and looked. The room was right side up. Dory and Gink ran back up the stairs. Back into the little room. Dory looked into the pink bowl, then she shook some yellow dust into it. She poured some pink and blue and purple stuff all over that and stirred it up. Abracadabra, fiddle-dee-dee, said Dory three times. Dory looked around her. Suddenly, slowly, the room was changing color. Oh, good, shouted Dory. At last, it's turning out right. Oh, no, Dory stamped her foot. The room kept on changing. Purple. Everything turned purple. Dory sat down. Gink came over and leaned against her. Nothing was turning out right, and it was getting later and later. There were already dark purple shadows on the light purple grass. Dory sighed. I will try once more. Dory emptied the bottle of blue stuff into the bowl. She stirred and she stirred and she said, Abracadabra, diggity do five times. The bowl of magic bubbled and bubbled. Pink bubbles, blue bubbles, purple bubbles filled the little room. Gink sniffed at a bubble and sneezed. He hid under the table. Dory stopped stirring and looked around. The room was changing color again. Blue. Everything turned blue. Just then, Dory heard the big witch flying home over the treetops and into the yard. Oh, dear, said Dory. Come on, Gink, hurry. And down, 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 down the stairs they ran. Around the corner and into the pantry they ran, and Dory shut the door behind them. Dory listened. She heard the big witch open and close the front door. She heard the big witch grumbling because Cook did not come. Then she heard the big witch going upstairs. Dory squeezed into a corner behind a barrel. Soon she heard other sounds. She heard wheels outside the house and voices. One, two, three, four knocks at the front door. Oh, Gink, said Dory, everyone has come for the party, and there isn't any party. Cook is still a horse, a blue horse. The stove is cold. The soup kettle is empty. Oh, Gink, why wasn't I good before lunch? The voices were louder now. Everyone was in the hall. Why, you have the whole house over in blue. How lovely it looks, cried Miss Dorp. My dear, I just knew you'd get tired of all that black sooner or later. Blue is such a happy color. I like it too, said Mr. Orbs. Obes, blue is much nicer color than black. I like red best, said Squig. I like orange, said Dinger. Orange and green. 
I like black, said the big witch, and I'm tr just trying blue for a change. Dory waited, but she did not hear any more voices for a while. Gink curled up and went to sleep in Dory's lap. Then she heard everybody talking again and walking into the dining room. She heard the scrape of chairs as they all sat down at the table. The big witch rang the bell for Cook. It rang and rang. At last, Dory heard that clip-clop, clip-clop of horse hooves as Cook walked across the kitchen floor. She heard the dining room door open. Everyone stopped talking. Cook snorted and pawed the floor. The big witch rang the bell again louder. Cook, Cook, come at once, shouted the big witch. There's a horse in the dining room, a blue horse, and it's wearing your hat. Come take this animal away and bring us our dinner. Dory got up and went to the door. She opened it a little way and peeked out. She saw the big witch stamp her foot and shake her long finger at the horse. But the blue horse did not move. The blue horse just looked at the angry witch. The big witch ran out into the hall. She hurried back in, waving Squig's best black umbrella. Squig closed his eyes. I do not want to see this, said Squig. That's only black umbrella. Tell me, Dinger, do you think it will rain today? Dinger looked up at the ceiling over the table. No, he said. It's going to be a lovely day. See how blue the sky is? That is good, said Squig. I am glad to hear that. But I still wish the big witch would not hit the horse with my best black umbrella. I like yellow, said Mr. Obes. Is it yellow I like? I like blue, said Miss Dorp. I like umbrellas, black umbrellas, said Squig. When Dory saw the big witch wave the black umbrella at the horse, she opened the pantry door and came out, and Gink came with her. Mother, said Dory, please don't hit that horse. It isn't a horse at all. It's Cook. The big witch looked at Dory. The horse is Cook, said big witch. A blue horse? And now this? Dory, what did you do while I was in town today? Dory looked down at the toes of her shoes. Then she looked up at her mother. I looked in your book, and I tried to find a recipe. A magic recipe that would make my bed clean. Make my bed and clean up my room and put away all my things. A magic recipe that would do it in just one minute. The big witch frowned. And did you find one? she asked. No, said Dory, hanging her head. So I made one up. And when it didn't work, I made up more. I see, said the big witch thoughtfully. Then she said, Dory, do you know why you couldn't find that recipe in the book of magic? Dory didn't say anything at all. Well, I will tell you, the big witch said. Magic can do many things. It can make black look like blue sometimes. Sometimes it can make people look like horses. It can make strawberry jam taste like mustard. But to clean up a room, there's no magic way. You have to... I know, said Dory. First you open the door and walk into the room. Then you pick up the nightgown and hang it in the closet. You find both pink socks and both blue striped socks and both black socks. You fold them up and put them away. You put the shoes in the closet and close the closet door. You pick up the books and the papers and the pencils. You put the books in a row on the shelf. Then you make the bed neatly. The big witch smiled a very big smile. That is the right recipe, she said. The blue horse snorted. Dory turned around. The big witch turned around. They laughed and laughed. Poor cook, said Dory. I am so sorry. Dory patted the horse's nose. The big witch clapped her hands and turned around three times. Suddenly the room wasn't blue anymore. It was black, just as it had been that morning. The pot was bubbling in the kitchen, and Cook was running to and fro with the plates and the bowls. 
Squig pulled a chair over to the table for Dory. The big witch gave the umbrella back to Squig. They went back to the table and had strawberries and chocolate cake for dessert. It tasted like strawberries and chocolate cake. When they had all finished dessert, they went into the living room. Mr. Obbs played the violin. Mrs. Dorp, Miss Dorp sang songs, and Squid and Dinger danced. They all played hide-and-go-seek. They played leapfrog and blind man's bluff. Then it was time for Dory to go to bed. She went into the kitchen. Cook, said Dory. I am sorry I got the wrong recipe and turned you into a horse. And I'm sorry about the three white ducks in the soup and turning everything blue. Cook took Dory on her lap. I am sorry I didn't let you taste the soup this morning and I did not mind being a horse. I got a good rest and I ate up all the daisies. Cook laughed and Dory laughed. Good night, Cook, said Dory. You are a nice cook. Good night, Dory, said Cook. You are a nice little witch. Dory said good night to Miss Dorp and to Squig and Dinger and Mr. Obbs. Then she kissed her mother. Good night. Good night, Dory, said everyone. Dory went upstairs to bed. Gink went with her. Dory climbed into bed. The room was still a mess. I'll clean it up tomorrow, Dory yawned. I'll do it right after lunch. Gink sat on the windowsill and looked at the moon. It looked like a big bubble. Gink sneezed. The end. Happy Halloween.